Today we're going to be solving radical equations. And so for these, we're going to start off with this question. We have the square root of 4x minus 5 equals 2. And so our, our entire goal for this is obviously to figure out what x equals. Um, so to get started, we got to get rid of this radical to be able to get x by itself. So that means that we're going to square both sides in order to get rid of that radical. And when you do so, the square root and the square go away, so we're left with 4x minus 5 on the left equals 4 on the right. And now we just have an algebra 1 equation to solve. So we're going to add 5 and get that 4x equals 9. And then we're going to divide by 4 on both sides and get x equals 9 fourths. So we're going to leave our answer as a fraction. And so with this then we're going to check our answers by taking it and plugging it back into the original equation. So if we do that, we have the, uh, the square root of 4 times 9 fourths minus 5. And we want to see, is that equal to 2? So 4 times 9 fourths means that we're going to have 9 minus 5, still under the square root. 9 minus 5 is 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. So since that's equal, we know it works. And there's our answer. All right, next one here. If we have negative 10 plus the square root of 2x plus 1 equals negative 5. So with this question, we have something else on this side with the radical. So we want to make sure to isolate the radical. What that means is get it by itself. So to do that, we're going to add 10 to both sides which gives us the square root of 2x plus 1 equals a positive 5. And then the same, this looks almost exactly the same as the previous question, where now to get the rid of the square root, we're going to square both sides. That would give us 2x plus 1 equals 25. Solving for x, we would subtract 1, and then divide by 2. So we're getting x equals 12. Now, again, taking that answer, plugging it back in. And it's one of those things that you don't actually have to physically write down that you're plugging it back in. You can just kind of do the math. So 2 times 12 would give us 24. 24 plus 1 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. And then negative 10 plus 5 is a negative 5. So it works. All right, if we look at another one here, we have the square root of 4 minus 2x plus 4 equals 5. And this is where if you feel like you understand this stuff, you could pause the video, try it on your own, and then jump through the video um, to make sure you actually got it correct. So again, we got to get the square root by itself, or whatever the radical is. It doesn't necessarily have to be a square root. So then we would have the square root of 4 minus 2x equals a positive 1. Square both sides. And 4 minus 2x would equal 1. We're going to subtract 3 from both sides. Um, subtract 4 from both sides. Goodness gracious. Subtract 4 from both sides and get negative 3. We're going to divide by negative 2 on both sides, and x would equal a positive 3 halves. So we're going to check this, and, and it could be the case that with fractions you want to actually show work to check it, that's kind of up to you. Um, but negative 2 times 3 halves would give us negative 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 4 gives us 5. So there's our answer, okay? Now, if this was a cube root, you're still going to isolate it. You're going to get the cube root by itself. Then you're going to have to cube both sides in order to get rid of that, OK? 
Okay. So let's take a look at building in some of our rational exponent pieces. So if we have 2 times the quantity x minus 2 to the 2 thirds power is equal to 50. And we're going to solve this. So this is 2 times. So we're not going to, we can't distribute this in because remember, this is just a radical. So we can't distribute it in. We need to divide both sides by that 2. That's going to leave us with x minus 2 to the 2 thirds power equals 25. Now, when we're looking at our rational exponent of 2 thirds, the way to get rid of that, well, the way to get rid of the cube root would be to cube both sides. The way to get rid of squaring both sides is to take the square root. So what we're going to do here is multiply or take it to take both sides to the reciprocal power. So here, if we take 2 thirds times 3 halves, that's going to just give us 1. And those things are going to go away, and we're left with just x minus 2. On the right-hand side, we still have 25 to the 3 halves power. Well, what does that mean? That means we're taking the square root of 25, and then we're taking that to the third power. Root goes on the bottom, exponent goes on the top. So let's look at this off to the side here. If we take the square root of 25 to the third power, the square root of 25 could be positive or negative 5. And then that's going to be taken to the third power. So here we, could have, we would have x minus 2 equals plus or minus 125. So a thing to note, um, let's see, we'll write it over here. When the numerator is even, there could be two answers. Okay, so then we have two situations that we are in. We either have um, x minus 2 equals positive 125 or x minus 2 equals negative 125. And we need to solve both of those and then check both of those answers. So here we would add 2 to both sides and we get x equals 127. Adding 2 on the other case, we get that x equals negative 123. So checking those, go all the way back to the beginning. So 127 minus 2 okay, is 125. The cube root of 125 is 5. 5 squared is 25. Multiplied by the 2 out front gives us 50. So this one works. Negative 123 minus 2 is negative 125. The cube root of a negative number is still just negative. So we get negative 5. Negative 5 squared is positive 25 times 2 gives us 50. So both of those answers work as well. So let's try another one like that. So we have 3 times the quantity x plus 1 to the 4 thirds power plus 1 equals 49. Just like we did with the radicals, we're isolating those the parentheses. We're getting that completely by itself. So we would need to subtract 1 on both sides. The parentheses still not by itself, so we need to divide by that 3. So we have x plus 1 to the 4 thirds power equals 16. And then in order to um, get rid of that power that we have there, we're going to have to cube both sides and take the fourth root. So that means that we're taking both sides to the 3 fourths power. 4 thirds times 3 fourths means that goes away. So we are left with x plus 1. And then we have the fourth root of 16 to the third power. So again, if you have the fourth root of 16 
to the third power, the fourth root of 16 could be a positive or a negative 2. So that means that we're going to have x plus 1 equals plus or minus 8 when we take that positive or negative 2 to the third power. So we're in two different situations. So here we would um, oops, subtract 1 from both sides and we get x equals 7 or subtract 1 from both sides and get x equals 9. Um, negative 9. And so when we check those, go all the way back to the beginning. So 7 plus 1 is 8. The cube root of 8 is 2. 2 to the 4th is 16. 16 times 3 is 48. Plus 1 is 49. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Negative 2 to the 4th is positive 16 times 3 is 48 plus 1 is 49. So that one works as well. Let's take a look at one more question here. So if we have 3 times the quantity x plus 1 to the 3 fifths power equals 24, isolate the, ver or isolate the parentheses. So that's going to give us x plus 1 to the 3 fifths power equals 8. To get rid of this, we're going to have to take it to the fifth power and take the cube root. So you're taking the reciprocal to both sides. That means these are going to go away and we're left with x plus 1 equals the cube root of 8 to the fifth power. So if we're looking at this, the cube root of eight to the fifth power, cube root of eight is just a positive two. Okay, so we don't need the plus or minus with this. So then we're just taking two to the fifth power. So we have x plus one equals 32. Subtract one from both sides, x equals 31. And then we're gonna check that. So 31 plus one is 32. The fifth root of 32 is 2, 2 to the third is 8, and 8 times 3 gives us 24. So with these questions, that's our answer, but with these questions, you're going to make sure that you're either isolating the radical, getting the radical by itself, and then squaring both sides or cubing both sides in order to do that. If you have a parentheses, you're going to isolate that parentheses, and then you're going to work on um, taking the reciprocal or taking both sides to the reciprocal power and making sure to check your answers. If the numerator started as an even number, that means that your denominator of your reciprocal is going to produce two answers, and you have to make sure to do plus or minus. And that's it.